In this lecture, we are going to cover all the requirements of subclass 6.1.2. This clause is about the requirements towards an information security risk assessment process that needs to be made available as documented information. In the next couple of minutes, we are going to have a look at this subclass and learn what the requirements are, what these requirements imply and how to implement the required activities. In other words, we are going to answer the questions on what needs to be done, why does it have to be done, and how can it be done. Alright, so the required activity of 6.1.2 is to define and apply an information security risk assessment process. Risk assessments aim to identify, quantify, and prioritize risks against criteria for risk acceptance and information security objectives. The results of risk assessments guide and determine the appropriate risk treatment plans that are necessary to meet an organization's objectives. Risk assessments include three steps. Risk identification, risk analysis, and risk evaluation. Risk identification is the first step and prerequisite to the following steps. During risk identification, organizations try to determine possible adverse events that can harm their security objectives. Therefore, organizations need to identify their assets, vulnerabilities, existing controls, and the current threat landscape. With this information, risks and the associated negative consequences and impacts can be determined. Let's take a closer look at an example. Imagine there's an organization situated on Hawaii and it operates a data center. A data center is undoubtedly an asset, not just in terms of information security, but also financially. However, it's important to protect the data within the data center in terms of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. We know this as the CIA triad. Now, what about possible threats? Since Hawaii is located on an island with volcanic activity, it's safe to say that a volcanic eruption is a significant threat. But what about existing controls? We haven't discussed controls yet, but they are measures that modify risks. For instance, a front door is a physical control that protects the data center from intruders, thereby safeguarding the confidentiality, availability, and integrity of information. However, a door cannot protect you from a volcano. Now such a risk would of course lead to a disruption to all business services, which is why it is a very critical risk that needs to be treated. Now that we have identified a risk, it's time to analyze it. The common definition of a risk is a threat that exploits the vulnerability of an asset. In our example, the volcano exploits the geographic exposure of the data center. The goal of risk analysis is to determine the level of risk. Risk levels are determined by analyzing the impact and the probability of risks. There are two types of analysis methodologies, qualitative risk analysis and quantitative risk analysis. According to ISO 27005, qualitative risk analysis uses a scale of qualifying attributes to describe the impact and the probability that negative consequences will occur. Qualitative analysis are easy to understand, but they are very subjective in terms of evaluation. In this example, you can see a risk matrix consisting of two dimensions, impact and probability. Each dimension has a scale indicating the severity of the impact and the likelihood of the risk. In this example, the impact has the following levels, minor, moderate, significant, and extreme. The likelihood can be classified as very unlikely, unlikely, likely, and very likely. Each combination of impact and probability represents a certain level of risk. In this example, we have four levels of risk, low, medium, high, and major. Impact, likelihood are the risk evaluation criteria that help us to determine the corresponding risk levels. Let's try to use this matrix to determine the level of risk for the volcano eruption on Hawaii. The likelihood of such a natural hazard is rather unlikely, whereas the impact has extreme consequences for the organization. The corresponding level of risk is high. Please note that this classification is highly subjective as no further guidance on how to determine the probability and impact of a risk is provided in this example. Organizations should establish guidelines 
that support employees with risk analysis to make it less subjective. However, this methodology is a great starting point. Quantitative risk analysis is a more objective approach to analyzing risks. In quantitative risk analysis, organizations attempt to determine the actual costs and probabilities of risks. This methodology provides more specific information and allows for quantifiable decisions. However, please note that the results of this approach should be considered as estimates rather than exact figures, although the final results can be very close to reality. The asset value represents the replacement value for the asset. The exposure factor is the financial loss that results from the realization of a risk expressed as a percentage. The single loss expectancy is calculated by multiplying the asset value with the exposure factor representing the financial loss for each occurrence of the risk. The annualized rate of occurrence describes the probability of the risk and is usually expressed as the number of times per year. Finally, the annualized loss expectancy is the single loss expectancy multiplied by the annualized rate of occurrence. Let's analyze our volcano risk with this methodology as well. For the sake of simplicity, we'll assume the value of the data center is $1 million. If the data center is hit by a volcano eruption, there will be probably nothing left of it. Therefore, we set the exposure factor to 100%. The single loss expectancy, which is described as the product of asset value and exposure factor, is $1 million as well. This means that every time the volcano erupts and hits the data center, the entire asset value is destroyed. The probability of the risk expressed as the annual rate of occurrence is hard to determine. Based on speculation, we'll set the ARO to one occurrence in a thousand years. Finally, the annualized loss expectancy is equal to $1,000, which is calculated by multiplying the single loss expectancy with the annual rate of occurrence. The third and last step of risk assessment is risk evaluation. Remember that in the very beginning, organizations are required to determine risk acceptance criteria. Organizations want to reduce their exposure. That's why identified risks need to be treated unless they are already within their risk acceptance criteria. In this example, an organization has determined that the following levels of risk are acceptable. This includes all low and all medium risks. They are within their risk appetite. By consequence, all risks exceeding these criteria have to be treated until their level of risk has been reduced to a more acceptable level of risk. The volcano risk was classified as a high risk, which is why it cannot be accepted because it is outside of the organization's risk appetite. The risk can be reduced by risk treatment. The probability of the risk is already classified as very unlikely, which means this metric cannot be further reduced, which makes sense as organizations have no impact on volcano activity. But the impact of a volcano eruption can be reduced by relocating the data center, signing an insurance, or establishing backup sites to name just a few possible controls. When implemented successfully, the impact should be reduced and therefore the level of risk would be within the acceptance criteria. This leads us to risk treatment, which we are going to cover in the next lecture.